And on a pretty grim day for some fans, we thought we'd lighten the atmosphere a little. We've rested regulars Hanson and Brooking and brought in two uncapped trialists. They fantasise about football quite a lot, Frank Skinner and David Baddiel. So here you are, chaps. Oh, God, is this actually Alan Hanson's chair? That is where the great man sits. This is Trevor's. That's where Trevor Fantastic. sits. I'll probably scowl then, have a go at Matthew Letizia and then go on about what a great team Liverpool were in the 1980s. So You're getting the hang of it. You're getting um, the hang of it. I'll just be far too nice about everybody. <laughs> we'll hear more from the boys a little later on after we see the action. Right, we begin at Goodison where Everton's 40-year run in the top division was in... Of course. Now, Frank Skinner and David Baddiel are pundits tonight. This is where the punditry starts. But, of course, it's been a sad day, hasn't it? And, you know, we can't just have fun about this because oh. all the fans, it means so much to them. It's terrible watching. There's a bit of a tear in Dave Bassett's eye there. I'm, I'm filling up. It is. It's terribly sad. There's no consolation or anything. Sometimes people say this thing about, you know, it can be good for a team getting relegated. I think that's absolute rubbish. It's yeah. terrible. Mm. I'm off to... Uh, Portsmouth tomorrow to see if my team West Brom can stay up. And, uh, what have they got to do? Well, they need to do whatever Birmingham do, basically. So if Birmingham Only draw, better, we so draw. So to speak. No, yeah. Yeah. As good will do. But yeah. it's very stressful. I don't think I'll sleep very well tonight. West well, Brom man. And, and David, you're Well, my heart Chelsea. goes out to Dave Bassett as well, because he was on our programme the other week, and he's a great bloke. But it doesn't go out that far, because I was very pleased to see Mark Steen scoring again, because that means he'll have booked his place. On, uh, for Wembley. next Saturday, for yeah. the big one. Yeah. Now, you kept your eye very much on the Everton match today. Yeah, I mean, I was, to be honest, I was glad Everton stayed up. I think some people like to see a big team go down, but it does feel wrong for a side like Everton to get relegated. There has to be changes there, I think, certainly. One thing um, which occurred to me that needs to be changed is, you know when teams go into, can you answer that phone, Des? <laughs> when, when teams go into Anfield and onto the pitch there, there's a big sign that says, this is Anfield, which I think has terrified players for years, you know. But when you go onto the pitch at Goddison Park, the sign there says, Welcome to Everton, and that's too nice, isn't it? It's sort of means Very like, gentle. It suggests sort of, Welcome to Everton. You can have three points, if you like. And there's uh, Anders Limpar giving a lovely welcome yeah. to Wimbledon in the third minute, think, in fact. It's extraordinary, though. Well, I think a lot of us were wondering why he did that. But when you think about it, he's in a defensive position. The arm's gone up automatically. Clearly, he still thinks he's playing for Arsenal. Oh, it's an offside appeal. Yeah. Of course. Oh, you've, you've, you've got it. I can see why you're here now tonight, yeah. Dave. I yeah, the chairs are working. You hadn't worked, it out. Hadn't worked it out up till now. Oh, I can feel a Scottish accent coming on. But, uh, uh, it was very influential, <laughs> Limpart. There was a couple of incidents which, I mean, I'm no expert there, as you know, but which... Really? They Don't put yourself down. OK, then, I'm a bit of an expert. And they could have been dives, I thought, possibly. Mm. Dive-ish. Um, dive-ish. There's one just outside the area here, and incredibly, Limpar gets a, a free kick for that. If anything, it should have gone the other way. But he's just outside the area. This one, he gets his position in better. This is the penalty, and I don't think there's any mm. contact there at all. Nothing. Now, the next one later on was definitely a dive. I think this one coming up. Oh, this one? There, uh, there's yeah. Anders. That's it. <laughs> Actually, I've seen it again, perhaps not as blatant as the first two. Yeah, you might be right. Actually, I, I saw uh, Mike Walker give Anders Limpar some advice about halfway through the game. I don't know if you, if you spotted that. That might relate to that. Yeah. There you oh, go. Yeah. Oh, that's it, yeah. Oh, dear. Well, that must have helped, I think. Well, I think Hanson and Brookie are in danger here because this is really. I mean, We're cooking is, now, aren't yeah, we? You're, yeah. you're off and running. Now, Black. Got some terrible defensive errors. All oh, these chairs. <laughs> yeah. What about Letizia, though? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't get him going. Blackburn against Ipswich. <laughs> yeah, Blackburn against Ipswich. It wasn't quite as exciting as the Everton game. It was nil nil for a start. You were and supposed to be concentrating on it. How do you know? Did you have to have an, one eye on the other one, did you? Oh, yeah, I just about <laughs> spotted what was going on in the other one once or twice. Yeah. But, um, Actually, the player that impressed me most was uh, a young Blackburn player called Ian Pearce, who's played, I think, once before. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he's 19, quite a, I think. Yeah, he's quite a big lad, but he's very tricky on the ball, you see. And uh, that sort of neat turn, you know, the ball comes from Graham Lasso here, and he does it again. Look at that. That's really, he's, he's so good, I think he's actually turning into Eric Cantona. Look at that. Yeah. Collar up and everything. In fact, if the camera pans down here, you can see he's actually walking over a Norwich defender <laughs> during that shot. <laughs> Well, I thought Ipswich, did, Ipswich didn't really play with as much fight as you would expect for a team in their position. They, they, uh, so in the first half, they let possession go. and Rather were, lucky to survive, I would I thought. thought they were. Yeah. yeah. Norwich. And the fans didn't go on the pitch at the end. That's the first time the Ipswich fans haven't been on the pitch for about three months, actually. Mm. Bit of a turnaround. They couldn't work it out. Mind <laughs> you, we had trouble all afternoon working it out. Oh, Norwich against Oldham. You had a look at that one, too. Yeah, mm. Norwich versus Oldham. Um, well, I noticed it's a, it's a shame that Oldham have gone down. I think. It's a shame, shame because, you know, they, they thought they were going to get to the FA Cup and stuff. Oh, it's terrible. The, I mean, the fact is, there must have been fans on the, 
uh, at Wembley, sitting there thinking about getting cup final tickets and all that. A couple of minutes to go, they were there. They were there for the big day, and then that Mark Hughes goal seems to have turned their entire also, season. They've, they've got a fantastic trainer at Oldham. Uh, I don't know if you've seen him. He's a man who, who really fully believes that Lucas aid aids recovery. Here he is now. It's yeah. something that he's lived by all his career. That's the injury. <laughs> Interesting application. It works, and look at that. Instant yeah. recovery. But he's had to deal with an awful lot, uh, this trainer over there. This is Sean McCarthy, who's had a, a terrible record, apparently, of shoplifting broccoli. And uh, the trainer's had to deal with that as well. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Terrible place to get caught. Surely course. he could have grown his own broccoli at Boundary Park, couldn't well, he? Well, not on that pitch, too sandy. Oh, I think, I think it likes a sandy soil, broccoli. Mm. From I have to tell you, you're spotting things the others just don't spot. Yes, you there really you go, are. you see. You really are. <laughs> More in a moment. Well, there were five other Premiership matches on this last day. Now, we always have a comment about the Tissier from that particular chair. I, I think it would be inappropriate if we didn't tonight. Well, I think I want to break the Hanson mould, actually. I think the Tissier is a fantastic player. He looked great today. And recently, since Alan Ball took over at Southampton, I think he's looked fantastic. Yeah, I love Matthew Letizia. I don't know if I'm being over nice by saying that, but I do really like Matthew Letizia. I've always thought it's completely... You set out to be sort of nice, didn't I you? I set out to be nice. I'm being even yeah. nicer than right. I set out to be now. Yeah, but it's no good doing it once every three or four weeks. What, just I'm sorry, I don't nice. know where that came from. <laughs> that was very odd. But also, he's not, he's not as lazy as people make him out to be, I think. He actually he gets... Because in the Fantasy League, without wishing to bring out the Fantasy League again, but he's got more points than any other midfielder. And you don't get that many points without basically doing something in every game. Are you surprised how popular the Fantasy League has become? I must thought... No. Oh, this is, no. You're I'm surprised. You're awfully good on it. You're awfully good. <laughs> oh, thanks, Des. Yes, you're awfully good, good as well. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, you're quite you're, good too, David, yeah, by yeah, the way. You're yes. rubbish, I think. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. I'll, my heart does go out to the, those fans today. I think fans are a resilient lot. I was leaving uh, the Hawthorns at, uh, about three months ago. We just lost to Nottingham Forest. And there was an announcement came over the loudspeakers, and it said, uh, Mr. Sansa, Sansa, your wife has just given birth to a baby. And the bloke next to me said, oh, he said, poor devil. He's had to sit through this, and now he's got to go home and make his own tea. <laughs> and I thought that sums up the football fans' mentality, really. Yeah. Which, is the which is the team that's given you most pleasure this season? Uh, well, Manchester United have given me most pleasure this season by losing twice to Chelsea. Um, and hopefully they'll do it again on Saturday. I have really enjoyed the way they've played, and particularly the fact they haven't played quite so well against Chelsea. I That's think Blackburn have done incredibly well to make a race of it in the end, though, because it was so much a, a one-horser, yes. and then they, they came out of nowhere. To the, to the and it's very. incredible that it, we, it, it turned out to be not that tight, but you know, it looked like it could have been for quite a while. They've done incredibly well. well and Wimbledon, to finish six, considering they've only been in the league 17 years. And and what we always say on this programme, when you wax on a bit too much, we yeah. say, I've got to stop you there. Right. Um, Frank? David, thank you very much indeed for being with us. It's thank been you, a big David. thrill for us, David. Very nice indeed. Can we join in on yeah. the... Uh, uh, you can in a minute. Oh, we, haven't, we haven't quite finished yet. All I would say is that uh, Trevor, Allen, you're OK. Now, <laughs> it's uh, goal of the month time. The top three chosen by Badil and Skinner's substitutes were... Right after 89 minutes today at Chelsea Ipswich were down, Sheffield United had survived. A minute later, it had all changed. It's supposed to be fun, this game, but it can't half be cruel as well. Good night. Simple, this, isn't it? <laughs> Nothing to it.